Hi guys and welcome to Escape with Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Megalith Chronograph Model 8388. So I received this watch for free from the Megalith official store on AliExpress. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. That's not going to sway my review one way or the other. The current retail price for this watch is only $66 and I think you should definitely check it out. Even for $66, I think it's a great value. Um, but I do expect it to go on a little bit of a sale for 1111. Uh, the watch is offered in five different colorways. You have silver, gray, black, blue, and green, all with sunburst finishes on the dial. And I think they all look pretty good. The watch case and bracelet are made of stainless steel. It doesn't mention the 316L stainless steel, so I'm just going to say it's stainless steel. Uh, I don't think it's not 316L. Um, I just, uh, they just don't mention any other type of stainless steel. So um, yeah, just stainless steel is what they call it. Uh, it has a sapphire crystal, a push pull crown, although they do have screw down uh, pushers. They have a screw down case back, 100 meters of claimed water resistance, and it's powered by the Seiko VD57 quartz chronograph movement, which we will talk about in a little bit. So this is an homage watch, and if you are interested in said watch that this is paying homage to, but aren't quite willing to plop down the full price for one of those, which is currently about $1,500, I think, uh, this is a pretty good option just to get a taste of the real thing and see if you actually like this design. Uh, but 66 bucks, right? $66. It's not going to be perfect. I say we jump right into the review. Before we do, do a quick wrist check today. Got the Pagani design. New, um, I'm going to pop the model number down below because I can't remember it off the top of my head. 1751 maybe? I don't know. But uh, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. I believe this one might be coming up next. So, All right, let's get the dimensions out of the way. So I've got a diameter of about 41 millimeters, thickness of 10.3. The bracelet width is 28 millimeters, but obviously you're not going to be swapping the bracelet on this thing. The overall end link to end link is 55.3 millimeters and sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with seven links removed. It weighs about 142 grams. So the size of this thing is not bad. 41 millimeters and it's pretty close to the original, I believe. Uh, you know, integrated bracelet watches, they wear big. And this one definitely does wear big. Uh, I feel like it wears close to like a 42, maybe even close to a 43 size. Uh, but it is nice and slim, uh, which is which is really nice to see. 10.3 uh, millimeters, I think it was. Uh, that end link to end link, you know, 55. Uh, you just kind of have to expect that with this. There's, there's no, I mean, there's very little movement in these two end links here. So, uh, if you can't pull off that distance right there, you, you, you shouldn't buy this watch. Uh, thankfully, I can, so I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here it is on my 7.5-inch wrist. And you can see that it does wear big. Uh, definitely wears big, but uh, not unwieldy, I don't think. And if you like larger watches, this is probably not a bad option for you. You can see here, it is a fairly flat case, but those first end links there, they do turn down pretty good. So it hugs the wrist really nice. Um, yeah, it looks very thin on wrist. I think it looks good. You see lots of light play off of the uh, bracelet there. I think it looks really good. Very happy with the way this thing looks on wrist. I think it kind of pulls off the, uh, the look that it's going for. So, um, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm going to pop out in some direct sunlight. And here we are in some direct sunlight. You can see the blue of the dial. There's a, a decent little sunburst to it. It's not super strong, but it is there. Uh, I like the blue color. I think that looks nice. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, just the way this thing kind of plays with the light, that bracelet, the flat links, they just look awesome. Really, really happy with that. There's no AR on the crystal, so it does get a little washed out, but it hasn't been uh, too much of an issue to read this thing. So uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the, the looks of this watch. What do you guys think? Obviously no straps for this one, so let's go back inside and we'll get back to the review. All right, let's talk about the case finishing. So the case finishing on this thing is actually okay. Uh, it's definitely not perfect, but it's pretty nice. You have, we'll start from the top here. So you have on the face of the bezel here, you have a vertical brushing. It goes pretty much straight up and down. I think it might be just, just a hair off, uh, off a vertical, um, but pretty nicely done, I think. Uh, and then that goes down to a polished bezel, as you can see there, which kind of has like a chamfer down to the actual slope of the bezel. So 
two steps to that bezel there. I think the polishing is done pretty good. I don't see any issues with the polishing. I think it looks pretty good. The top of the case here, again, is vertically brushed and again, pretty nicely finished. Uh, it's not really showing up. I can definitely see it up in this corner right here. They kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just not a consistent brushing up in this corner here. And that's pretty much the same for all these corners. It's a very subtle thing to see. Uh, I definitely see it um, not so much on camera, but definitely away from the camera, I can see it. Uh, but otherwise, I think the case finishing is fine. Flipping it over to the crown side here, you can see you've got a nice horizontal brushing along the case sides. You've got a nice high polished chamfer separating the tops and the sides there. Pretty nicely done, well defined, nice polishing. Uh, I see no issues with that. The crown is signed here with the Megalith logo. You've got two screw down pushers as well. And I'm just gonna unscrew these right now just to show you something. You can see kind of on the inside of this pusher here, it's not very nicely finished. Um, again, a fairly minor thing, but you that's just something I noticed. So I wanted to point it out to you guys. Um, but yeah, pretty nicely done, I think, overall, for especially for the price, it's definitely not bad. Flipping it over to the case back here, you almost have a bee blasted finish on the bottom of the lugs, which is unusual. And then you've got a screw down case back, simple notches to get a tool in there if you ever need to mess with the battery. Uh, the battery cell is 337, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's got your typical spec sheet around the outside. It's nicely done, it's nice and smooth. I got no issues with the case back. All right, let's test this thing for Sapphire. And my thing just died, but I did test it earlier and it is Sapphire. So it is a dead flat piece of Sapphire crystal. There's no inner reflective coating or anything like that. There's no chamfering, there's no dome, there's no nothing. It's a very boring crystal, uh, but I think it's perfectly suited for this watch. I've got no issues with it. Even the lack of AR doesn't bother me too much on this watch. So uh, yeah, I've got no, no major issues with the crystal. All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. So the dial is actually a really nice kind of subtle blue color on this one. Really subtle sunburst as well. I do like this blue color. I think it looks great. Um, yeah, it looks really, really good. You have some silver sub dials there with concentric circles and polished rings around the outside. Polished hands there. All those sub dials are for the chronograph, which we will talk about in just a second. Uh, the main central minute and hour hands, really nicely done. Good size, in my opinion. Good finishing. I see no issues with those. The second hand, again, nicely sized. It does kind of get lost a little bit here and there, but otherwise pretty nicely done. The indices are all applied. As you can see here, you got a double baton at 12 o'clock. Shorter batons where all the subdials are. And uh, yeah, you got your megalith branding here. Nice and big on the dial, which I'm... Eh, it doesn't bother me too much. It's a pretty cool font, I think. You've got a framed, eh, not framed, but chamfered date window there at the kind of 430 position. I think it looks all right. You got Japan made, which is, um, yeah, that's not really true. We know that this watch is made in China. Uh, this should say Japan movement uh, because it is a Seiko movement. But yeah, I think overall the dial is pretty good. The loom on this thing, I'm going to pop up a loom shot right now, is absolutely horrible. Um, it's pretty much invisible right away. So I don't, don't depend on this at all for the loom. It's just not good at all. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So the movement is the Seiko VD57 chronograph movement. It's a nice movement. I got no major issues with it. It's a little unusual in the fact that all these subdials are for the chronograph. The central hands are for the time setting. So you don't have that stationary chronograph, which I'm not really used to, but other than that, it's a fine movement. It's a three year battery life. The battery cell is 337, I believe. And uh, yeah, they run at plus or minus 20 seconds per month. So they're accurate, they're reliable, they're gonna run forever. And as long as you change the battery in them, they're gonna, they're gonna go and they're gonna keep on going. Um, the operation of the time setting position is through this three o'clock crown here, push pull crown. So nice action on it. This first position is your date changes, which nice and quick. Feels, feels fine to me. Uh, you pull it out to the third position here and it does hack the movement. And this is where you set your time. I see no issues with it. Hands don't jump or anything like that. So nice solid feeling, nice solid feeling on the crown as well. The chronograph. So the chronograph has been running as you can see here. So we're on 55 seconds of the 18th minute. And then if you do um, stop the chronograph, 
the subdial at the 12 o'clock position here should set to a split second time here. So let's see where that stops. No way it stopped right on. Yeah, so there you go. Um, so now we are at the 19th minute, 15 seconds, and 0.4. So this up here is actually a split second but it's actually two seconds. So this thing goes around one time in two seconds. So uh, it's unusual, but uh, pretty helpful if you're trying to get a pretty accurate reading. Uh, it does keep, it does continue for the first minute and then it stops, but then it should, once you uh, set your time, it should pop to whatever split second time you're at. Um, but yeah, I think it works pretty good. It looks pretty cool when it runs. My big issue with these things are that they don't snap right back. So, you know, we're, 18 or 19 minutes in if i'm going to reset this thing you can see it slowly wind back so that's going to take quite a bit of time so i'm going to pause it real quick and here we are we're winding down to the last little bit here and there you go so it all does line up really nicely i'm going to start this up again these these pushes are pretty mushy which i'm used to with this movement uh, they don't feel great, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So you set it there, and there you can see your split second. So that will run for one minute, and then it'll pause, uh, and then resume once you uh, start or stop the stopwatch. Um, but yeah, pretty, it, it's fine. Um, that my only real complaint is how long it takes to get back there. It takes quite a long time, especially if you're in the 30 second range, or uh, the, sorry, the 30 minute range. It takes a while to reset. Other than that, though. Pretty nice, nicely done. The screw in and out of action of these pushers. It's really, really light, uh, but they do screw down pretty tight and I haven't had an issue with it. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet on this thing. So the bracelet is pretty nicely done. Like I mentioned earlier, it's like 28 millimeters. It does taper down to 20 millimeters. I had to remove seven links for my seven and a half inch wrist, so it's plenty long. They are push pins for adjusting, solid link bracelet, brushing on the sides, brushing on the top. And I think the brushing is actually pretty nicely done. I've seen no major issues. When you get up really close, you can see some little burring here and there. I don't know if you guys can even see it here, but I saw it during some of my macro shots. Um, but otherwise, I think it's it's fine. Uh, I got no, no major issue with the bracelet other than the fact that this top edge here is pretty sharp. Um, bottom edge is maybe just a little bit sharp, but this top edge is definitely sharp and it can catch on clothes. It's caught on my clothes. Um, so if, if you wear this with a, you know, long sleeve shirt or sweatshirt or sweater or something like that, it could catch on it. Um, but it's been fairly comfortable for me. The butterfly clasp works decent. Uh, it's got the buttons here, so you're not fighting with friction, uh, friction clasps. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got no major issue with the clasp on this thing. I'm not a huge fan of butterfly clasps, but, um, mostly that's because you don't get uh, micro adjust, but these, these links are so close together and so short that it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I think you're going to be able to get a pretty good fit on this thing. Um, but yeah, otherwise it, it is pretty good. You've got the megalith branding there at the, uh, the clasp. I think it all looks good. It, it definitely plays with the light just like the original. And I think it looks really, really cool. Very, very cool. So there you go, guys. That is the Megalith Chronograph model 8388. Uh, pretty nicely done. I mean, $66, and they packed all this in there. Um, yeah, that's that's really nice. And they kind of nailed the case shape on this thing. Uh, the the bracelet is also actually pretty good. It's a little bit sharp, but other than that, it's pretty good. And the movement, it's useful. It's accurate. Three years of battery. Um, yeah, I see no issues with the movement either. There's no real deal breakers with this watch other than the loom. If you're expecting good loom, just pass it up. Uh, otherwise, I think this is a great watch. So if you guys are interested in this, head down to the link in the description. That is an affiliate link. Thank you guys so much for using my affiliate links. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments. I, I kind of like it and it kind of makes me want the, uh, the 35 millimeter version of this watch, um, that this is homaging. Um, I think that would be pretty much perfect. So yeah, I think that's about it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.